count wives and girlfriends, like 80, some coming to my house tonight. And they come back and support, and then seeing all these guys, these young guys, trying to fulfill their dreams. I mean, that's, that's part of the deal, not just get a college degree, but also get an opportunity, possibility to fulfill their dreams. And so, uh, you know, it's whatever we can do to help them do that. Does your party get bigger and bigger every year? You know, it just depends on the year. It, you know, it's, it depends on what team they're in. You know, so some of the new coach, you know, when they, they change coaches, they go back a day or it's like, Andy can't be here tonight because they got a new head coach so that, you know, they come back a week early with some guys like that. And plus they're getting older. I think Jerry has, uh, his son has his first basketball game. You know, it's he's like five or six years old that he's never, you know, is going to be in. So those are the... But those are the fun stories. They, they come over here a lot. They come to watch practice because they all live in the area. And it's like I saw Marcus over there. It's, his wife's getting ready to have a, a little one here any day. And so they don't have him tonight. By tonight, then uh, he'll be over. And, and not, then uh, we, know what, we know what's more important. Uh, so uh, making sure that they're safe and doing things. So uh, those are the – watch them grow up and listen to them talk when they come back in the office how their life's going. And, you know, whether they, to be honest with you, tomorrow we have Letterman's, and I think we have close to 200 coming back for that, too. It's those are the, after the scrimmage is over, we got, we've got lunch for them and doing it. All those things are uh, make all this stuff worthwhile, all the work that you put in, you know, because you want to teach them to understand no matter what year they played, uh, they, they're all a frog. And so, Gary, a lot of focus on LJ and Ben today. What would you tell NFL teams about those two guys? Well, I mean, I don't. I I only tell them when, when they ask me a question. I think the biggest thing is is they both they both got degrees, along with even Ty. They both got degrees. Uh, they both have their own different set of skill set. Uh, but I think they're really good players. I mean, they've proven in a very good league <clears> that they can rush the passer. And I think that's and they're both guys that are good people, and so. You know, that's one. Of, there's a couple of characteristics right off the bat. Everybody knows Ben's more of a speed guy. LJ's more of a power guy. And so every team that's here today is looking at him, you know, for probably those reasons. So. How does that help you all recruiting <clears throat> when you can tell these recruits that you guys have success as first team Big 12 defensive ends and they're getting looked at by NFL? Well, teams? yeah. And last year you had offensive linemen. You know, every year it's a different. It's a different personnel group. Uh, last year you had no boom. You had you know all five linemen got into camp somewhere. Two or three of them got drafted. I mean, it's I think that's the you know that's the thing that's every year that you have those players. You know what you ultimately want to do is you want to have you hope you have a guy at every position that's got a chance to be drafted. And that's where we started 22 years ago uh, to where we are now. It's it's completely different. You know everybody wants in recruiting sometimes they want to say TCU's not big time football. What's uh, they play against us, and they, they understand the kind of kids. But it's the facilities, uh, the players, everybody. It's it's, it's fun the staff, it's, you know, which I think doesn't get enough credit. Our my staff, you know, not just our full time guys on the field, but everybody down through administration, uh, chancellor, everybody that's been a part of board of trustees, that's been a part of building everything that we have here. Here we're 22 years, and now we're putting an east side on it. You know, and the, the jumbotron is going to go almost flagpole to flagpole. It's going to be about three or four times the size of what it was before. I mean, it's, those are the things you just do it a little by little. That's what we've been trying to get accomplished. Gary, when you look at uh, <laughs> your defense, kind of how important is it for guys like Ben to run linebacker drills, especially in, uh, when it translates to the pro? Well, yeah, but hey, we already did that within our mm -hmm. defense. I mean, we, we covered backs, we dropped, we covered tight ends, and so. Every team's going to teach it differently. I think one of the things that they learned that the NFL really likes is we teach kids to process. We don't just teach them to go. And when they do their individual meetings, uh, that's one of the things I think they're most impressed about is you know, they always ask them, offense and defense, well, tell me about tell me about your defense and this play and what's going on. And, mm -hmm. and uh, what they find out is we, you know, we, teach, we teach more a lot of times than a lot of people do. Uh, and so, you know, it's, we want to, we want kids, whether it's go to school, get a degree, we don't just walk that, we don't just talk that talk, we walk it. And we also, in our in sets, as far as how the guys play and what they do. And so, uh, you know, you want the complete person when they come out. A complete person has a better chance of making it in the league a lot longer. You know, it's like trying to be a head coach somewhere for a while. 
and you have to have a good foundation. So try to teach them a great foundation. Do you have any Malcolm Williams in this group, guys, that you think that maybe come out here and perform today that get on these radars of NFL? Yeah, I, I don't know. You, you have to see. I think that's where a couple of them, you know, you know, you have over here Jonathan Anderson here that's, you know, it's been in the league four or five years. I don't know. I don't think he's ever made the 53-man roster. He's made the work squad and he's, he's been called up. He was with Chicago for three years. This year he was called up with Arizona. And so, you know, they, they end up with no debt out of college because of their own scholarship and they get a degree and they can play three or four years, whatever it is. They, I don't know about you, but I wasn't. I didn't. I might even had an over, overdraft when I when I came out. <laughs> alone. Anything else? So uh, for them to have that opportunity and be ahead of the game, I think is is priceless. I mean, it's what you're trying to get accomplished. Gary, you, you mentioned last year you watched some Chiefs film to scout for the Tech game, but do you see the pro game transition or taking even more college concepts? Yeah. I, well, yeah. I think you know everything's cyclical. Mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, it's, even in our league, our league used to be a no tight end, no, you know, throw it all over the place, and everybody's now starting to go back to tight ends, uh, you know, starting to go back to where we're getting bigger, everybody's getting bigger, everybody's getting more physical, everybody's doing. And so I think you're going to, I think the NFL is the same way, depending on the player that comes out. You know, I've had many questions because we played the guy from West Virginia, the guy Ohio State, and then the guy at Oklahoma. Which, two or three of the best quarterbacks they think is coming out in the draft. And so, you know, if you're an eye back, I'd probably tell you not the guy from Oklahoma. That's what, not that he's not, he's a great player, but he needs to be in. So I said, well, if you're not going to change your offense, then I, I tell you, you know, he probably is not the guy you should draft. Mm -hmm. you know, and so, uh, but, you know, I've had a lot of phone calls. <clears throat> I probably had more phone calls about all those things of my own. Usually I only, I get to the general managers and all those guys here in about, two or three weeks if there was a guy that got a chance to be in the top two rounds and so. You talked a little about the, the offense and the NFL taking stuff from college. You, did anything ever happen, everything ever happen like that with defenses and do guys come pick your brains on that? Uh, <clears throat> I think, you know, they, um, I don't know that it happens on defense as much as it happens on offense because you can get play plays, but that's, um, you know, it's, we've had a lot of people who have talked to us about you know, well, anytime we get TCU film, then we, we study it because we're different than a lot of people and what they do and how they do it. So. That being said, do you think the 425 translates most to like the Tampa 2 at the pro level? or? Oh, no, Tampa 2 is not. Tampa 2, you have to pressure. be you have to be up front and, and you have to be able to get to the passer fast. You know, it's because of all the RPOs that you're seeing, people do a lot more man concepts within their zones because they got to handle all the slants and the quick what we call pop slants and quick things that happen with all of it so how long has it been since an nfl guy at one of these tried to talk to you about a job well i have those guys talk guys that are uh, scouts that talk to us all the time about that about you specifically well no i'm talking about them coming you're asking me about coming back to the nfl up from going back to college and coaching or Ask to talk to me about uh, defense or, what, or me getting a job. Like an NFL, like how long has it been since maybe an NFL team approached you about a job? Well, I'm you know, usually every year I'm talk I talk to somebody about something. Okay. Not necessarily about a head job. Some days you don't want to be the head guy. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, maybe you ask any coach. You ask any coaches. Besides the last day of the month as a head coach, all of us that got in for the right reasons all just want to be. You'd like to just coach linebackers or safeties or D tackles or DNs because you don't have to. You just get to do what you got in the business in the first place to do, right? <laughs> so, coach practice, coach ball. In fact, yesterday was fun because I didn't call the defense yesterday. We scripted and I stood on. I, I helped. I, I stood on the offensive side. Was uh, is spring ball making you want to be a head coach right now? How's, how's that going for you? Oh, it will. It's, I'm, I'm learning how to manage numbers. Is what what I'm best at right now. Manage numbers. How do you get through one more practice? Our whole thing is get to next Tuesday. You get to next Tuesday with everything, then you know, basically spring ball, even though we have a couple more, we'll start working on Purdue and Pine Bluff and whoever else that we need to get, get, ready, to get, get ready for. So you, you had some good experience last fall, I guess, unfortunately, doing that, just trying to get through practice. Well, yeah, so I mean, but you know, it's never been anything through anything like that. But that's, you know, it's. 
what you gotta you gotta figure out. That's where you, you find out how how much somebody believes in what you what you do and how much your kids believe in it. For us to fight back with all the things that happened and get back to a bowl game and do all the things we did, I think it's a testament to the kind of kids we have here and the foundation within the system that we that we built. <clears throat> it's hard to do that, and uh, you know our kids know that. Our, our chemistry right now on this team, and all you can wear. I mean, we got a chance to have 40, 40, 40 to forty-two bodies in June and come August that we don't have. We don't have out in spring ball. You have a little over 20 guys that are on our team right now, and then you have about you have 20 new freshmen and transfers and grad transfers and everybody else coming in. So, I mean, that's half the, that's half your scholarship team. So mm -hmm. for us, <clears throat> we're not where to be honest. We we're not where we need to be yet, uh, either side of the ball. But as I tell people all the time, in 2014 when we put in the new offense, in the spring game we didn't even score, and that's the highest point total that we've ever been at TCU then next fall. So our whole thing is just to keep going up. Guys like Plant and O'Shawn at defense end because we lost some really good players. And then and every other position that you see out here. And so if you can do that, uh, you're going to have a chance to be more successful. So it's All eyes are going to be on the quarterbacks. And have you guys had two scrimmages? So just one scrimmage so far? Uh, two. How have they looked in the scrimmage? Good. I mean, it's what we ask him to do and what we're trying to get accomplished. <clears throat> you know, quarterbacks always have a lot to do with because if you're throwing the balls and you've got five wide receivers out, Rager's not, you know, he's not out in spring anymore. John Stevens didn't go yesterday. And so, yeah, Tay Barber's had a great one. So it's, you know, you have to have, you have, to have guys that can throw and that can catch it and do all of it. We've held Shaywell out most of everything that we've done. Darius hasn't gone through, Anderson hasn't gone through things, so it's both your starting offensive tackles. You got four offensive linemen out, seven, seven offensive linemen, four wide receivers, five wide receivers that they didn't, some of them didn't even start spring. So you don't, you don't even worry about that. What you do is just keep teaching the system and and uh, growing, and and so that when you get to fall, these guys that are here, and that's what's happened. We have a lot of guys that. They've grown up a lot in uh, 10, 11 practices. So, how's uh, Michael Barkley looking these uh, these days with the speed that he's playing? Uh, well, you right now, it's, you know, it's until you know what you're doing. Four four guys look like four seven, and sometimes guys that are four seven that know what they're doing look like four four. So I'd, I'd say about all the new guys we have all fall into that category. We'll go one more question and get back to drills here. I want to make sure I watch those two yeah. knuckleheads over there. <laughs> With Ben, he came in scout team player of the year and then was a captain his first year playing. What does it say about a guy like Ben that his teammates said, we want him as a captain, even though they never actually played? Well, yeah, game. that's what they all do. Everybody votes. I mean, Ben's a great guy. You just, it doesn't take you about two minutes to talk to him to understand what kind of person he is and how he does things. I mean, think about this. <clears throat> it might be the first time in 36 years that, I, that I've been in college coaching that a guy went to the Senior Bowl, went to the Combine, and comes back here and you read in the paper he's out doing uh, work in the community. Uh, he's had a great school teaching, doing things. Most people are just worrying about them. He's come back here, he, he's up he's up talking. Parker called him, one of our new, our new JC guys called him and said, will you sit down and watch the scrimmage with me over spring break because nobody else is here. So I opened the door for him. And he's over at some grade school putting on a presentation. You just, those kind of people you want to help the rest of your life because they're giving back. And you can't, you can't say anything more about somebody like that. I mean, it's just perfect. Thanks, Coach.